Welcome everyone to 50 years of fighting together. We're winning where the foundation fighting blindness is celebrating its 50th anniversary and the stories that embody its 50 years of fighting to find treatments and cures for the diseases that cause blindness. My name is Charlie Kramer. I'm a brand ambassador and VIP beacon for the foundation. And I also have retinitis pigmentosa. So today you're going to hear stories from individuals and families passionate about the foundation's work and from researchers that have dedicated their lives to saving and restoring vision, all woven together by highlights of the foundation's own stories and efforts. We're also celebrating the passion of the foundation supporters across the country and around the world, highlighting those who are joining us both for local and virtual vision walks, gala events, and those planning their own fun activities through raising our sites. I want to take a second to share my own personal story a little bit. So uh, like I said earlier, I have retinitis pigmentosa. It actually runs in my family and my mom and my sister both have retinitis pigmentosa. So I was diagnosed at five and at 15, I was legally blind, but I didn't think that was a big deal. I thought that was normal and that my vision was doing just fine. Uh, and honestly, for most of my life, I acted as if nothing was wrong. I tried to act normal for as much as I possibly could because I just didn't want to be blind. Uh, but honestly, over the past few years of using my blind cane every single day, owning who I am uh, and recognizing the power of this incredible community, I've come to this place of loving being blind, being so grateful to be a part of this community. And I know the foundation has a huge, huge part in that transformation in my life and in the lives of so many others that you're going to hear today. Uh, my family and I actually were even a part of the very first vision walk when I was uh, 13 years old back in Los Angeles. So I want to take a second now to introduce Ben Shaberman, the senior director of scientific outreach at the foundation fighting blindness. Wow. Thank you, Charlie, for so poignantly and enthusiastically kicking off our virtual vision walk and 50th anniversary celebration. Charlie is really amazing. He's a gifted musician and inspiring speaker. You know, to have been legally blind at 15, but yet have such a positive attitude and project such enthusiasm, he's really remarkable. And yes, as Charlie said, I'm Ben Shaberman, Senior Director of Scientific Outreach at the Foundation, and it's been my honor and privilege to have been part of this urgent and impassioned fight to end blindness for nearly 17 years. The research progress has been incredible, and it's been wonderful to have made so many friends, such inspirational people and families and scientists along the way. So I'm going to be your MC and science storyteller for this jam-packed and inspiring program to celebrate our virtual vision walk and our 50-year anniversary. And whether you're celebrating by walking, running, swimming, or even napping if you want, we appreciate your generous support of our mission to end blindness. And to kick things off, my first reflection is going to be about the founding of the foundation back in 1971. As many of you know, the foundation was founded by Gordon and Luli Gund and Ben and Beverly Berman back then. But it was actually Dr. Elliot Burson at Mass Eye and Ear in Boston who brought them together to begin the foundation's mission and get the first retinal degeneration disease lab off the ground. That was the Berman Gund lab. So Elliot was the pivotal matchmaker. Now it is my pleasure and honor to introduce Mindy Kaplan, our first guest. She's daughter of the Bermans, and she'll reflect on her family's journey and the dedication and commitment of her father to launch the foundation when she was just a young girl and she and her sister had been recently diagnosed with RP. Retinitis pigmentosa, rare, inherited part of the retina of the, of the eye, slowly leading to blindness. There's nothing. Take your daughters home and teach them Braille. In 1971, that was what the doctors at Johns Hopkins told Ben and Beverly, my parents, once the testing had finished, for my sister, Joanne, age eight, 
and myself, Mindy, at the age of 11. There was nothing. Take us home, teach us Braille, inherited blindness. There was no blindness on either side of our family. My father couldn't wrap himself around that. He had been a pre-med student and went into the real estate developing. That's another story. But he began his own investigation. He called some friends that were doctors, started looking into hospitals, universities, institutions, anybody that had heard of retinitis pigmentosa. He finally came across some papers that had been written by a young doctor named Elliot Burson, who was in Boston, a Massachusetts eye and ear infirmary, and had taken up a passion regarding these retinal diseases. My father quickly called him. The next thing I knew, my dad and my mom and I were on a plane to Boston. And as all you know, who've been through the testing, it's long and grueling. My dad saw that there were other people sitting in Dr. Burson's waiting room, introduced himself to a couple names. And he noticed that outside of the hospital, there was, there was scaffolding going on. So building was going on. When it was my father's turn to sit down with Dr. Burson, my father wasn't really surprised that he confirmed the diagnosis. But my father said to Dr. Burson is, you know, I'm not alone. I took the names and addresses of everybody sitting out in your waiting room. And I see the hospitals going under construction. What would you say about starting up a lab and you heading it up and doing research? I think he shocked. Dr. Burson completely. And he's like, Mr. Berman, I don't know you. I think you should go back to Baltimore. I think you need time. You could tell the wheels were spinning on my father in the plane ride back to Baltimore. The next thing he did, he set up a meeting with friends and family and told them what was going on. They automatically said, well, if you're serious, go back up and talk to the powers that be at Harvard and Mass Eye and Ear if you want to set up a lab, but you will need for funding, and you'll need to incorporate into a 501c3. So the Berman shuttle began going back between Baltimore and Boston all summer long of 1971. By September, there was a pretty much a deal in place to start a lab with Dr. Elliot Burson heading it. And in, in September, RP Foundation was officially incorporated. By 1974, the first ever lab for research, the Berman Gun Laboratory for Retinal Degenerations was open for business. And my father swore that they would find the cure, treatment, and quickly go out of business. Not a lot was known about the retina. It was the size of a quarter, rods and cones, that was it. And all they were worried about was retinitis pigmentosa, macular degeneration, and Usher syndrome. Eh, we'd be done soon. Well, they were wrong. The retina was much more complicated. And there were over 300 mutated genes that caused over a alphabet soup of inherited retinal diseases. It was going to take a while. So from this grassroots group, chapters sprung up across the United States. International chapters sprung up all trying to educate and support the research that was going on. 70 institutions worldwide are now working on research. We have over 40 human clinical trials now trying to restore and preserve vision, and more are in the works. These are really exciting times, and we owe it all to all of you who are participating today. And now, the most important thing is no one will ever hear the words my parents heard 50 years ago. There's nothing going on. Take them home. You are all making something happen. And it's very exciting. Go Vision Rock. What a great reflection Mindy had on her father. He was truly an amazing man. And I must add that Mindy has followed in her father's footsteps and is president of the Foundation's Baltimore chapter. 
And I mentioned earlier that Elliot Burson was the critical matchmaker to get the foundation off the ground, but I want to take a moment to recognize other key members of our early scientific advisory board and scientific community. These investigators included Alan Ladies, John Dowling, Mort Goldberg, Jerry Fishman, Dick Welliber, Sam Jacobson, and the list goes on. And these researchers took on the daunting task of guiding the foundation's research strategy and investments at a time when so little was known about the retina or retinal diseases. These scientists were pioneers who dedicated their careers to fight blindness from retinal diseases. They were great with their patients, and we owe them tremendous gratitude. So now it is my pleasure to introduce our next guest, who is truly a grizzled veteran of the fight against blindness and knows firsthand of those early challenges in driving our mission. It is my delight to give you the inimitable, ever ebullient Evan Mittman. Hello, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Evan Mittman. I am on the Foundation Fighting Blindness Board of Directors and proud to be. And uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to share a phenomenal story about my life. At uh, 19 years old, I was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa. And needless to say, um, at that time, no one knew exactly what to say or to do about that. And uh, my mom at the time uh, was looking for something to help her son. And she asked everybody in this great big world, and she wound up in Baltimore, Maryland, at the house of Gordon Gund. And the rest is history. We met Gordon. We met the Retinitis Pigmentosa Foundation at the time. And my mom put together a trip to Israel. And um, all of her friends came and paid money because my mother wanted to raise money for the uh, foundation. And uh, on the side of the bus, it said, the Retinitis Pigmentosa Foundation. The foundation has meant everything to me. As I said before, I am so proud of the work that we have done. And we are on the precipice of the most incredible breakthroughs in history. And uh, I'd like to give 50 cheers for 50 years of the foundation and 50 cheers to our vision walkers. So let's vision walk and let's finish this thing. Love you guys. Wow, thank you, Evan. Evan is definitely the foundation's lead cheerleader. And I love the story of the RP Foundation bus. How cool is that? For those of you who don't know, we were originally called the RP Foundation and changed our name back in 1995 to the Foundation Fighting Blindness to reflect our focus on the entire spectrum of inherited retinal diseases. Now, continuing on the theme of early challenges, we knew that these retinal diseases ran in families back in those early days. But it took about 18 years until the first retinal disease gene was discovered by Ted Dreija at Harvard and Pete Humphreys at Trinity College in Dublin. And that gene was rhodopsin for those of you keeping score. And what's exciting is we now know that nearly 300 genes are associated with inherited retinal diseases. And thanks to that knowledge, we can identify the mutated gene causing a patient's retinal disease in about 65% of cases when they're genetically tested. And that genetic diagnosis is critical to helping the patient understand what research is most applicable to them and if they're candidates for clinical trials for genetic therapies. And I'm very pleased to say that the foundation offers a no-cost genetic testing program to help people get that genetic diagnosis. And if you visit Fight 
fightingblindness.org and look under the genetic testing section. You can learn about how to order a no-cost genetic test. It's something that your doctor actually orders. So now it is my pleasure to introduce our next guests. They are Jenna Rollerson and her son Maverick from Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, I'm Jenna Rollerson. Um, this is Maverick. We are in Jacksonville, Florida. Last year, um, Maverick was diagnosed with X-linked juvenile retinoschisis um, in January of 2020. So at that point, I had no idea that this was something that ran in our family um, and come to find out there are several distant cousins and actually <laughs> my dad also um, that are affected by this. So we had no clue. My dad had no clue. Um, so he kind of sparked a uh, research and it, I made it my mission to learn everything I could, um, about retinoschisis and about what it was going to mean for him moving forward in his life. Foundation fighting blindness was one of my first stops as a resource. We attended, uh, I attended, um, a meeting in February of last year, and it was actually their last meeting before COVID hit, um, the last in-person meeting for the whole year. So at that point, I learned about Vision Walk. It was the Vision Walk kickoff meeting, and we kind of dove head in um, to what Vision Walk was and what the foundation was and everything that we could do. At that meeting, I also was introduced to um, the doctor who became his local doctor. He happened to be the speaker that day, and it was just a huge blessing for us. I have found so many resources through even just attending that one meeting. It was just like we were at the right place at the right time. Um, and I have been able to lean on so many of the people in, uh, involved in the foundation to just ask questions or send text messages um, at all hours <laughs> of the night, really, because in that initial first 90 days, I would say we were very dazed and confused and didn't know what was happening and, and didn't really know what to think at the time. So it's, just been a tremendous resource for us. And I'm so grateful for everything the foundation is doing scientifically. And um, it just gives us so much hope and so much to look forward to. And I am so happy to be a part of, of what the foundation is doing. And Maverick gets involved also. He was the youth chair for our local vision walk this year. And that was really cool for him. Um, we have a big team of supporters and we enjoy doing vision walk and we enjoy raising money. We're working on a, a golf tournament right now. Um, that's going to raise money for the foundation this spring. And this is going to be our first year doing that. And we plan to do it annually. And we're really excited about what that means for us and for our family to be able to get involved a lot more with the foundation. Um, but overall, we just are so grateful and just, continue to learn every day. And I really am so excited that this is marking 50 years of foundation fighting blindness, which I feel like is absolutely amazing. That is just a really long time to be in this. And I can't imagine what, you know, the progress that has come in those 50 years. So I can't wait to see what the next 50 years brings. And hopefully it's just going to change lives. And we are really excited to be a part of it. So good luck, Vision Walkers. Have a great day. Thank you, Jenna and Maverick. I think Maverick's destined for Hollywood stardom, perhaps as the strong, silent type. He's got the looks. He's definitely got the name. Just remember that it was me who gave him his big break. But seriously, what's important to their story is, first of all, that we're now able to quickly and clearly diagnose kids like Maverick with inherited retinal diseases. That was a lot more challenging in the early days. And also, there's now much hope and promise for ensuring that kids like Maverick will get the treatments they need to save and restore their vision. And one reason for that is the success of gene therapy. There are now a couple of dozen gene therapies in clinical trials, and we have an FDA-approved gene therapy, which I'll be talking about later.
And with gene therapy, essentially what we're doing is we're replacing or augmenting copies of the mutated gene with healthy functional copies. And what's really cool is that we're using human engineered viruses to get these healthy gene copies into the retina. It sounds like science fiction, but it's really working. And I'd like to turn on the Wayback Machine again and recognize one of the great gene therapy pioneers, Bill Houseworth from the University of Florida. He got us into the retinal gene therapy field back in the mid 90s. And that was the time when a lot of different um, disease uh, groups and investigators were not so sanguine about gene therapy, but we knew it had a lot of potential for the retina and uh, here we are today. But his work in RPE65 gene therapy was a key part of the effort that led to Luxterna, that first FDA approved gene therapy th for the eye or an inherited condition. You could say that Dr. Houseworth was like the godfather of gene therapy. He made gene therapy vectors we simply couldn't refuse. And so I'm delighted to uh, introduce our next guest, Shannon Boy. She really is a rock star in gene therapy development, and she came out of Dr. Houseworth's lab at the University of Florida. Here's Shannon Boy. Hi everyone, my name is Shannon Boy and I'm a professor at the University of Florida. I'm also the Associate Chief of the Division of Cellular and Molecular Therapy. And I have spent the last 20 years focused on developing gene therapies for inherited retinal diseases. So I just wanna take a few minutes to tell everyone why the FFB has been so important in the advancement of my career and, and my own sort of personal fulfillment. Um, so when I was a young researcher, kind of coming out of my postdoc, I was applying for grant after grant after grant. You need money to do science. Um, but the hard thing about being a junior investigator is that you haven't published 100 papers yet and you're putting in grant applications that are competing with very seasoned senior investigators and there's only so much money to go around. So it was really hard in the beginning for me just as it is for many other junior investigators. Um, but one day I applied for what's called an individual investigator award from the Foundation Fighting Blindness. And I still remember where I was when I got the email saying that I had been awarded the grant. I was at my grandfather-in-law's house, and I remember doing a happy dance around the table when I got the email. I couldn't believe it. Um, but it's, it's, I, I will always remember that moment because it was the first time that a sponsor really took a gamble on me and on my ideas. And what was so important and integral about that is that that seed funding allowed me to generate the data that I needed to be competitive for a larger grant application. So I was able to generate data and then apply for what's called an R01 to the NIH. And I was successfully awarded that award. So really that very first grant from the FFB is what propelled the rest of my independent career. And I, I really will never forget that. I'll always be indebted to the FFB for that. Um, and really quickly, they became kind of a second family to me. So I immediately started attending their yearly visions conferences and taking part in basically any FFB activities that I could. Um, and the reason that those things are so important to me is because I am a research scientist or a mouse doctor, you could say. So I don't have the opportunity to interact with the patients um, for whom I'm trying to develop these treatments on a daily basis. And so for me, it was really important to get exposure to that patient community. And it was through the FFB that I was able to do that. So I've made so many good friends and established amazing relationships with patients and their families, as well as other scientists in the FFB family. So that's become really an incredibly personally rewarding part of my career. And I have the FFB to thank for that. Um, and then I would say um, most recently, the way that the FFB has contributed to my career development and towards generally pushing these treatments forward um, is that they became one of the major investors in my company, Atsina Therapeutics. And they did this via their venture philanthropy arm called the RD Fund. Um, so it takes a lot of work, obviously, to get things to the point in a lab where you're able to prove, hey, I can rescue vision in this mouse model. But to bring that research all the way into the clinic takes a ton of capital. That's just the reality. So you have to go out and you have to pitch your ideas to venture capitalists. 
And you hope that somebody will, again, take a gamble on you and, and believe in your ideas and in your science and form and help you form your company. And the um, FFB's RD Fund was one of the first entities to do that. They provided the capital, they provided mentoring. And now we have Atsina Therapeutics. It was founded by my husband and I. Um, we have one clinical stage program that's already showing early signs of efficacy and safety. And we also have two rapidly advancing preclinical programs, one for a form of Usher syndrome and another one that the company has yet to disclose. Um, but I think really that spans the spectrum of sort of how the FFB was involved in the very beginning of my career, how they've been involved in really a level of personal fulfillment for me, and also in uh, more recent stages in funding um, at Cena Therapeutics. So um, I'm incredibly indebted to the FFB for the role that they've played all of those ways, all of those ways that they've been involved in my life. Um, and I just want to say happy 50th anniversary. Keep doing what you're doing. You guys are doing a great job, and I hope to be part of the FFB family for many, many more years to come. Thank you so much. We are definitely staying tuned to Shannon's research coming out of the University of Florida and at Cena Therapeutics. She is doing some really awesome work. And for our next story, I'd like to again go back in time to talk about Stargardt disease, which is an inherited form of macular degeneration affecting about 30,000 people in the U.S. and tens of thousands of more people across the world. And our story starts back in the 1990s when a young researcher from Estonia named Rando Alekmets was doing genetics work in cancer at the National Cancer Institute. And lo and behold, in 1997, he happened to identify serendipitously the gene associated with Stargardt disease, and that gene is ABCA4. And as they say proverbially, the rest is history. Columbia University subsequently recruited him to start a retinal genetics lab, and the foundation fighting blindness shortly thereafter began funding him to begin gene therapy work in Stargardt disease. And his work led to a gene therapy trial that ultimately wasn't successful, but now there are a few other Stargardt disease gene therapies now moving toward clinical trials. And there are several molecules and proteins for Stargardt disease in human studies right now. So his work was really critical in getting uh, Stargardt disease therapies uh, into the clinic. So now, before we go to our next story, we have a little work to do. You've heard about some great research, and I want to ask you to, um, if you can, to make a donation, to continue to support this outstanding research that's helping to advance therapies into clinical trials. So I want you to get out your phones and to donate using your phones. This is really easy. All you need to do is text the word FIGHT to 20222 and by doing so you'll donate $50 to the foundation in honor of our 50 year anniversary again just text the word fight to 20222 to donate $50 very easy to do and if you prefer you can also go to our website fightingblindness.org slash 50 years that's fightingblindness.org dot org slash five zero y e a r s and you can make a donation of whatever amount works for you and we thank you for your generosity today and we thank you for all the great work that you've made possible over our history so now let's go on to our next story where we turn to st louis where fighting blindness is truly a formidable family affair. And I am pleased to introduce you to Bob and Jill Morris. Hi, I'm Jill Morris and my husband, Bob. Hi. We uh, got involved with the Foundation Fighting Blindness about 16 years ago. Uh, our five-year-old grandson, Jack, was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa at that time. The uh, retinal specialist who we were seeing uh, told us that there were no treatments or cure for this disease. And that just we should just teach Jack Braille and make sure that he had a happy childhood. 
Well, we were not satisfied with that, as you would be any parent or grandparent or friend that's involved with someone with retinal disease. So we began doing research on what other alternatives there might be. And through this research, we found the Foundation Fighting Blindness. Uh, we immediately got involved with uh, the foundation. As a matter of fact, within a couple of years, Jill and I became uh, national trustees and continue to serve in that capacity today. And um, we found that uh, it was incredible, all the research that was being fun funded by the foundation and the uh, positive results that were coming out of that. So from all this, we gained hope. And hope is, a, is the key word. And that's the thing we have gotten from the foundation that has meant the most to us. Uh, we've got strong, realistic hope because of all the, the uh, uh, development and test work that's going on that's going to keep Jack from going blind. Uh, the foundation gave us a very, very realistic hope. And so we say happy 50th anniversary to everyone at Foundation Fighting Blindness. We're so thankful that you welcomed Bob and me and all of our family into your family. It has been a joy to be with you and feel like we're doing something positive in this fight to cure blindness. We absolutely know that it's coming because of all the work that you have done over the last 50 years. You have gone from no field trials 13 years ago when our grandson was diagnosed to 45 field trials today and actually are successfully helping some people improve their vision through those field trials. We're blessed to to be alongside you. We thank you so much. Enjoy your celebration and a cure is in sight. Wow. The Morrises really show us the power of grandparents. They're doing really amazing work. And I might add their son, Jason, is on the foundation's board of directors. They're truly an impressive family. Unbelievably, they've raised nearly $700,000 through their family's vision walk team, Jack Moe's Joggers. They are pretty darned awesome. So our next guest brings us to the topic of stem cells, which hold a lot of promise for saving and restoring vision. The stem cell work of our guest is very cool. He can take a small sample of adult blood or skin, turn back the clock on those cells so they revert back to a stem cell state. Then the cells can be coaxed forward to become any cell type in the body, including retinal cells, which we're interested in, obviously, for treatments. And we call this approach induced pluripotent stem cells. And our next guest, he is truly a pioneer in this field. So without further ado, let me introduce you to David Gam. He's an MD, PhD from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and he will tell you more about his cutting-edge stem cell research. Hello, I'm David Gam. I'm a professor of ophthalmology and visual science at the University of Wisconsin in Madison and the director of the McPherson Eye Research Institute. And I am extremely grateful for the support um, that the Foundation of Finding Blindness has given to me from the very beginning of my career. Uh, in the mid 2000s, when I was just starting here at, at the University of Wisconsin, and very little that was being done uh, with regard to stem cell research, the, the FFB recognized its potential, um, again, well before anybody else did, um, and went out of its way to seek me out and to support the work that I was doing at the very earliest stages, even the conceptual stages. And as a result of that early trust and faith in the work that we were doing, uh, we were able to advance our technology to the point where we can make uh, human photoreceptors and retinal pigment epithelium from human induced pluripotent stem cells and, and ES cells. Um, and more recently, we've shown that they can be light sensitive, uh, that they really have the authenticity necessary to replace those cells as they're lost in retinitis pigmentosa and macular degeneration. And that ultimately led to the start of a company here in Madison uh, with the hopes of in the near future going towards clinical trials. 
Um, so I can't uh, emphasize enough uh, that foresight that the FFB had uh, to recognize the technology in general as something that was worth investing in. And I was the beneficiary of that um, as, uh, as an investigator. And beyond the funds, which is really important, of course, it's that, um, that support that you get from your scientific colleagues, from these uh, uh, top-notch people at the Foundation Fighting Blindness who know how to uh, bridge academics and industry. Um, and that sort of um, uh, enthusiasm and uh, talent um, and expertise is very difficult to get uh, in any field. And we're very fortunate to have that in uh, retinitis pigmentosa. Uh, they're a leader worldwide, uh, not only in retinal diseases, but if you look at them uh, next to other disease foundations, uh, they really are, are uh, top notch um, and ahead of the pack. So I'm very fortunate to have been an investigator and a scientific advisory board member for FFB uh, for many, many years. And I will always be so as long as they'll put up with me. So uh, congratulations on 50 years FFB and thanks for your support. David is an amazing researcher. He's very humble and actually a really great speaker. If you're ever at a conference where he's presenting or a meeting, I strongly encourage you to see him talk. He really makes challenging topics accessible. With David, you will definitely learn a lot. So as many of you know, moving treatments into and through clinical trials is challenging and expensive. And our strategy at the foundation has been to partner with companies in myriad ways to get promising therapies through the clinical trial pipeline and onto the doorstep of the FDA. Through our RD fund, which is our venture philanthropy fund, and our translational research acceleration program, or TRAP, we're taking on that challenge very well. And again, I want to remind you, if you're feeling inspired by all, this, um, all these great reports on research, uh, you can get out your phone and text the word FIGHT to 20222 to donate $50. Again, text FIGHT to 20222 to donate $50 in honor of our 50-year anniversary. And if you prefer to go to our website, it's fightingblindness.org slash 50 years. Again, that's fightingblindness.org slash 50YEARS. And speaking of clinical trials, our next guest is Sue Washer. She is the CEO of AGTC, and she reflects on her company's promising gene therapy clinical trials for X-linked RP and achromatopsia, and the important role the foundation had in making those trials possible. Take it away, Sue. Hello, everyone. My name is Sue Washer, and I'm the CEO of AGTC. We're a gene therapy company developing treatments for patients with rare eye diseases, and that's why we're thrilled to be part of the Foundation Fighting Blindness 50th anniversary. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, the foundation funded many of our founders, including Bill Houseworth at the University of Florida, and importantly, Gus Aguirre at the University of Pennsylvania, who had those famous dog models that we're all familiar with. That funding to Bill, to Gus, and to AGTC was instrumental in us understanding the science of these rare diseases and beginning to figure out ways we could use the adeno-associated viral vector to develop powerful treatments for these indications. In the mid-2000s, we were lucky to be one of the very first recipients of the Win Gund Award. It was almost $2 million of funding, which at that time was a godsend for our company and a godsend for the patients who would benefit from our potential products. We put that money to work, and we are so thrilled today to be able to say that we have not one, but two programs going into late stage clinical development, and we're that much closer to having important treatments for patients suffering from rare ophthalmology indications. We congratulate the foundation on the huge impact it has had over several de decades our success would not have been possible without the foundation. And it's not just the financial funding we received, but the partnership on the science, the partnership on patient advocacy, 
the partnership on education has really been incredible. So happy 50th anniversary. What a great reflection from Sue Washer. And what's great about AGTC's XLRP gene therapy trial is that some of the sites are being led by young foundation funded investigators like Paul Yang from Oregon Health and Science University. They are the new breed of young scientists that bring incredible knowledge and talent and energy to their critical roles in advancing treatments and cures into and through clinical trials. Okay, so we're entering the home stretch of our virtual Vision Walk and 50th anniversary celebration, and I am delighted to introduce our penultimate guests, Jamie and Ava Kappelman from St. Louis. All I'm going to say is that Ava is one of the cutest little girls on the face of the earth, and I can't wait until we have more stories like hers to tell in the near future. Here are Jamie and Ava. Hi, I'm Jamie Kappelman, and this is Ava. Ava Kappelman, and we're here to talk about Ava's story and journey after being diagnosed with LCA. We uh, found out that Ava had LCA shortly after we her her younger sister was actually diagnosed with the same disorder. We had known. Um, that Ava always had some trouble with her vision, um, but we never fathomed that it was a genetic condition like LCA. Fortunately for Ava, once we found out, um, she was able to qualify for the Luxterna um, treatment and was um, very quickly um, given the procedure. The results have been amazing. Um, her vision has increased tenfold, spe- very specifically um, at night, her night vision. Um, she's doing wonderfully in school. It has dramatically improved her um, quality of life. We are very happy that Ava was uh, fortunate enough to receive the Lexterna treatment. Um, Ava, are you really excited to be in school right now and excited about the things that you get to do? Yes. Uh, she is now able to play softball. There are a multitude of activities that she struggled with before the treatment that now she gets to uh, partake in. So we're really happy. Um, but we, we want to wish um, the Foundation Fighting Blindness a very happy 50th anniversary. Um, and we um, are really excited for all those vision walkers out there. So go vision walkers. Now, I told you little Ava was ultra cute. But of course, as many of you know, Luxterna, the treatment she received, is our crowning achievement, and it's opened the door for gene therapy development for many other retinal diseases. It's the first FDA-approved gene therapy for the eye or any inherited condition, and it's had miraculous results for other kids and young adults. Kids have put away their canes, they're seeing the faces of their parents, and they're even seeing stars in the sky. And a $10 million investment from the foundation helped make it possible. We couldn't have done that investment without your fundraising through events like Vision Walk. Every dollar you've raised has really made a difference. But of course, a lot of work remains to get more therapies across the finish line. We have many, many more diseases to conquer. And with your hard work and commitment, we're getting there. Together, we are winning. So now it is my pleasure to introduce our closer for the program, Mark Valenziano. He is like the goose gossage of closers. Raise your hand if you remember goose gossage. Or maybe you remember Mariano Rivera if you're uh, a little younger. But Mark is a national trustee and he's done outstanding fundraising in Minnesota. He was chair of both the Twin Cities Vision Walk and Twin Cities Dining in the Dark. And though he's now in South Carolina, he got away from those Minnesota winners, he still has a Vision Walk team in the Twin Cities. And if you didn't have your phone handy, just let me tell you, now's the time to break it out. And thanks again for all your hard work in driving our mission. And thanks for viewing this program and being a part of the celebration and join me in welcoming Mark Valenziano. Mark, 
Take it home. Hey, thanks, Ben. Hi, I'm Mark Valenziano, and I'm proud to be a national trustee and a longtime volunteer for the Foundation Fighting Blindness. I want to thank everyone who has participated in this video celebrating 50 years of innovation, discovery, and just plain old hard work in our quest to cure blindness. Thank you to all of the vision walkers. Thank you to the individuals and the families who have shared their heartwarming stories. Thank you to our research partners for their amazing work, but also for explaining the crucial role that FFB funding plays in moving us ever so closely to curing blindness. Think about that. Together, we are curing blindness. The scientific breakthroughs created by these people are nothing short of phenomenal and brilliant, but it takes more than just these researchers. It takes the visionary leadership and the scientific advisory board of the Foundation Fighting Blindness. It takes the deeply dedicated staff at the Foundation. It takes all of the chapters and the ambassadors and the volunteers all across this country and around the world. It takes you and it takes me. This journey to cure blindness started 50 years ago with an idea and a few courageous and very generous people. But the fuel that has been driving us closer and closer to that cure comes from people like you and me in the form of our donations. We are so close to achieving the vision that Elliot Burson and the Burmans and the Guns had 50 years ago, but we have got to keep pushing until we get across that finish line. So please dig deep and give whatever you can. If you've already donated this year, please consider giving a bit more today, right now. And if you're new to the Foundation Fighting Blindness, then please get involved and give whatever you can. No donation is ever too small, and well, certainly no donation is ever too big. You can text the word FIGHT to 20222 and give $50 right now. Text the word FIGHT to 20222 222 and give $50 right now. Or if you want, you can press that button below and donate any amount you want through Facebook. Or if you prefer, you can go to the web address listed and donate there as well. That web address is www.fightingblindness.org slash 50 years. That's fightingblindness.org slash 50YEARS. Please give right now. It will take all of us doing whatever we can, giving whatever we can, and working together to cure blindness. To cure blindness, it is a remarkable effort and undertaking, and it is so fulfilling to be a part of it. Thank you for helping us to celebrate 50 years. And thank you for helping us get closer and closer to that finish line, which is now definitely in sight. Thank you. Thank you.